Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to continue some of our Ala Prema studies. Now, I know on the YouTube channel I've started some of the beginning lessons. We're discussing value and everything. But I also want to keep this playlist going, the Ala Prema playlist, where uh, you know some more and more intermediate and advanced. And I'm going to paint this slow enough today, so even you beginners, you should maybe give it a try. It's just painting a board. Don't Don't ever say you can't do it. It's just painting a board. You give it a try, you find out where your problems are, and we work through them, okay? So, but I'm going to paint slow enough, and you'll pick up a lot from this video about what we're going to do. So, we're going to paint auto uh, boy, I should say that again, huh? We're going to paint a la prima, which is a wet and wet technique used by a lot of oil artists, but acrylic artists can also use it. And I, use, and I show a variety of it, but we're going to keep our acrylics wet. We're going to keep our acrylics wet with the extender medium like I explained to you before this is a thinner medium this uh, will thin out the acrylics but it gives it a nice uh, long drying time depending upon how much you add, you add to it we're going to use Derivan's open medium which is this right here which is thicker and I like it it also has a little binder in it it makes the paint feel just a little sticky it feels uh, a little bit that uh, takes the heritage makes it feel just like an oil and uh, some of you have written me that you really enjoy it okay so we're going to do red camellias, and what I have here is a 14 by 18 board. I base coated it with a medium beige, a color I put on my palette. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I went out on the internet, got a bunch of free uh, photos for uh, just some ideas about putting together. I'm thinking of a horizontal kind of a spray of camellias. We'll draw it. I haven't, it's been about four years or so since I was looking at it, since I've painted the red camellia. They're really a lot of fun. I mean, reds are one of the more difficult color, and you know, of hue on the wheel in that if you add too much white to get those lighter values that uh, it goes pink on you. So reds sit way down here in our value scales right down into these you know four or five sometimes you can find a value of a six and so they're difficult as you get up here you get into those pinks and you get some of these real uh, red camellias here they don't get into the pink so we have to think about some different types of contrast value is going to help us, temperature is going to help us, okay, and we'll get into that. My palette here is the same standard palette that I use, but I put out a couple of additions today. Um, so this is my standard colors, the Hansa yellow, the Darya light yellow, the yellow oxide, naphthol red light, which is a nice warm red, the uh, uh, burnt sienna, pine green. This is my background color, this is medium beige, I'm going to be using it from time to time to soften edges. This is, uh, and you could also mix this too, but uh, this is Thedo Blue. This is PR170. This is naphthol red. This is naphthol red light PR9. This is naphthol red 170. Now I put it over onto this side because this is a cooler red, pure red, cool. This is a, a warm, uh, pure red. Then I have over here PB19, the, the red violet uh, PR122, which is... Uh, um, the quinacridone and then my titanium white. Now, these are my cools. So these are my cools for my uh, camellias today. A lot of them will appear cool. I'll also be using the naphthol red light to help, you know, warm that up. There's another absolutely gorgeous color that's in our line that I normally have used and I've used it for the last 12 years, PR175, which is brown matter. It is a magnificent red when painting deep, rich red flowers. I'm not going to use it today because one of the reasons is that PR175, as far as the world supply of that particular pigment, is almost gone. So the cost of that pigment is going way up. So I want to give some longevity to this video so someone five, six years from now when that pigment is gone, the people will still be able to paint these things. And we're going to replace it and we're looking for a replacement for it right now. It's really kind of difficult, but uh, we will. We'll find a replacement for it. But it's a beautiful pigment. Those of you that have it, cherish it and, uh, you know, maybe use a little bit of it in the painting today. It'll sit right in uh, really basically between a burnt sienna and your red violets right in here. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Uh, I use it into the deep shadows as you're transitioning between warms and cools. It's a beautiful color. Okay, so let's go on. So I base coated this board. This is a, a, a tempered uh, hardboard here that I have, or also known as masonite. Um, 
and uh, then I gave it a coat and I even had spilled other paint on it and I didn't give it a real good I'm gonna paint casual and this just helps me casual everything up okay so let's just do that okay first off what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna take some of my extender I love to paint casual uh, and impressionistic you know I I used to be such a big a big realist painter like a lot of you know and uh, I'm really into impressionism I will be showing you know in during this summer some of you liked that, that Zorn Roses which was that I showed you in the photo on on our chats you know on the, the posting um, some of you said you really like to paint that I'm gonna paint that for you more realistic with uh, five colors uh, four colors and um, you liked some of those realism a couple of realism still have some of you really like that so I will be showing that on the channel here okay so make sure you subscribe okay so let's just put in a little bit now they'll be a little darker because I've uh, sanded this one slightly and it's just uh, it'll just show a little bit of a difference but I like that kind of stuff so I'm just gonna put on a little bit of color here thin it out with the uh, medium beige now what am I looking for I I like to spread it out a little bit not make solid colors and I like to have areas of thick and thin so that as I apply other colors working into my background here it is going to sometimes hit dry areas and sometimes hit areas of thicker paint and thinner paint as I work some of these tones in here and that's going to help me get very uh, a lot more variation as I started to switch from you know being decorative arts many years ago and into the, the more formal arts and especially into impressionism I found that varying textures and the, you know the amount of paint that you use on the surface is so very important I had always had a tendency to make even strokes and so I like to to break it out and so I got the paint a little thicker in here a little thinner what we call granulated you lift the pressure on your brush and you granulate the paint out uh, as you get out to these areas and that's very important because that's going to build that as I work colors in here and use different things that's going to make each stroke a little bit different as it hits different areas okay all right so I want to work an area that I want to do some camellias and I want to leave a lot of negative space negative space is area without design so I want to leave a lot of that and I want to paint these camellias mostly right around in here and I want to have some colors and stuff coming out and stuff so I'm going to create some color of contrast first and you know me I love I love uh, pine green and burnt sienna but this time when you put this on do not mix them up real well just tap them in through here like this a couple of times so that you get them on your brush so that it's modeled let's hold our brush a little differently this is a three-quarter inch fusion flat let's hold it a little differently let's paint for impressionism we're going to push the brush down and then we're going to lift off a little bit of the pressure as a brush as it comes off here off to this side we may push a few right out in here like this now see the beautiful thing is you see areas of burnt sienna and you see areas of the pine green coming off in that area sometimes I will push I'm a big advocate of horizontals and verticals within the painting here so I would really like some of those I'll push and you can see how as I work it like this it mixes up a little bit here as it comes out use maybe the chisel the side of your brush you're looking for movements and stuff into your background but I want a lot of color up into here matter of fact maybe even a little bit more burnt sienna because we're going to be adding some nice cools down through here later on here so we'll just drag some of that out here now the other thing I love to do and you've seen me do it without see I like this kind of stuff see that little bits of that color hitting out there like that that just adds so much interest and movement and life to a painting and you know you're never going to be able to copy what I do here I'm not going to be able to copy that again just get that movement out here what's more important get that dark color right in here get that movement lighten it out and then we're going to add more stuff to it have some fun and stop okay don't get too much because you will start to destroy your movement does that make sense okay so I'm going to take a little bit maybe even a bit of my beige and a little bit extender onto a paper towel just a bit here and I love to drag through look at the colors that happen when I drag through with my paper towel I, I 
really kind of advance that look. I'm going to pull down a little bit, maybe right off the edge, because that'll look great when it gets framed, I think. And I pulled out a little a frame here out of our framing studio to sit there and say, okay, see, I'm looking for those colors that were going to work inside this frame. And I think it will, you know. So I'm going to keep that. Don't let me forget to put that in at the end of this video. I want to show you. Okay, so don't forget, let me forget. Okay, so let's work a little bit of that green. We saw a bit of that coming up here. And we'll pull some of that out and down here. Maybe so we'll pull that working out. So this gives it, so what does this do? When I'm thinking about doing something like this, I'm thinking about, okay, this is my heavier area. You know, when you're looking at a bush of a rose or camellias and this one, when I, we lived out in California, I had the most gorgeous red camellia uh, tree. It was actually a camellia tree that sat outside our back door. And I just loved the, the flowers and the rest. But when you're looking through it, you get these areas of real dark colored thickness of the bush, the thickness of the tree. And then as you get out to, on the branches, you get wispy and you get, you know, stuff and air and stuff coming through, which means we might add a little blue or something like that back here. But that's what this simulates, the thinness of it. And in here, the thickness of it, the thickness of what's going on. So right now I've got a little bit too much green right there. So let's just take that and break that up with some, a bit more strokes here of some burnt siennas, tapping some of that out there. Just break some of that up here. Let's also look when we're gonna when we're gonna paint in here. Let's look in for some of our camellias. Now we have our cools. I love quinacridone and the naphthol red light. The beautiful tones. Now this is all wet, so as I work this in, it is going to uh, it's going to soften out and gray out. So I don't want to stroke too many times. But I'm going to put, I'm going to think about camellia maybe here maybe turned up just a bit like this and I'm just going to lighten them so I can push down to put color but I'm letting the color run out of my brush and now I'm going to get real light and wispy so I'm going in and out in and out and trying to look for different sometimes I will just put a, a heavier stroke on it to put some color in there like that and then I'm going to lift the pressure on my brush maybe the corner of my brush here and just put on a few little whispers like that of that color. Now, let's go up here towards our medium beige. Maybe a bit of our our greens and our reds or greens and that burnt sienna here. That's going to soften it down. And let's just imagine here the area of another one sitting back here, and then we'll blur it out into the painting here. You can use your finger. Sometimes I use a paper towel. I'm just going to blur it out like that's a back one sitting back there, okay? Let's pick up some more. That red and that's all red. Beautiful bright color. See that picks up those colors right in there of this chameleon. Now what exactly happens here, I don't know, but I'm going to push in maybe a bigger one. Maybe this one closes down a little bit bit more than the other one and now I've got two positioned almost sim almost the same there so that's about all I want to do there I don't want to get too too much into that now I can blur off the edges here just by pushing into that wet color a bit back and forth everything is back and forth so you set up the movement in and out of your camellia there like that okay so you got to go in and out let's set up a smaller one maybe a cooler a little bit more toned so I'll grab just a bit of that green and some quinacridone and stuff let's set up more of a a bud or something see it's not quite as bright let's just set up a little bud or something right there and uh, you know maybe one or two or an area of a few of them pulling down here Okay. And when I do something like this, you, you know, all your beginners are just going, oh, how, how do you know what to do? What I am doing when I'm, when I'm thinking about something like that is just the area. Now, I can use different techniques, negative painting techniques, petal edging techniques, uh, texturing techniques to bring something together. 
So all I'm doing is, it's like if you take your, you know, if you ever look through the camera, the old 35 millimeter cameras, and then you turn that focus knob and it goes blurry and it comes back into focus. When I paint something back here like this, I'm thinking about turning the focus knob and blurring it out. So I'm not catching a whole bunch of shape of perfect what it is. I'm just carrying an edge or, or an area there of color. That's all I'm interested in is an area of color. Now, that could be turned down camellias, something in the back, something just, just like this one, maybe into the back, back there like that, fitting back in, into that position like that. And so if I want to make it recede, what I do is I put on a color and then just drag your finger through it. Now, don't do that too many times. And why it's so important, don't do that too many times. Because see, I just took my thumb and went, boom, like that, and left it. Now, to the viewer, that may look like a petal that's coming out and this, and this camellia is starting to turn sideways instead of being, being flat like that. So if I drag in and out like this, I turn it and I create almost like little petals, see? Almost like the look of little petals here pull in here because I'm doing those sideways motions here and that could be camellias starting to turn sideways I can do it with more paint out here onto this one you know start to give it to, as I put those side petals on there like that that turns it because it's taking it to that oval shape see and into here so the a beautiful artist will create uh, different they're sitting their peonies at different ga or not peonies how many times am I going to say that today? It's like that last rose one I did a few about a month ago, and I kept saying peony when I was painting roses. Anyway, uh, it it is like when you you know you're getting all these different gazes through here. That's what you want to do, so they're not all facing exactly the same way. When I was a beginning artist, I'd be happy facing them all the same way. As I learn more, we want to shift them and 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 work them out a little bit different. Now. Let's get a bigger one. Let's take some of that quinacridone and that red, a little bit more red. And let's get a bigger one right in here that's gonna be our queen. I always like to set up what I call the queen, the one that controls the composition. Let's face her down. So to face her down is gonna go more oval. I'm gonna apply a lot of real nice, thick, reddish paint right there into the, right there into the middle of that of that one there and maybe touch a bit out here to the side now this is, would be very impressionistic to do this if you look at some of the photos I have uh, the community treaty we had had very stiff petals like that and that's going to be a judgment that you have are you going to set up your petals really stiff or are you going to blur out the edges or we call you know, blur them out, fuzz them out, lose the edges, what is called lost edges in painting. So this is a lost edge. As I put up a petal, it could be a found edge. What, I've, what I have discovered over years and years and years of painting is I like both, and I like to, I'll bring out a found edge, a, a very specific stroke, where I want you to see, and I'll tell you about that. But right now, what I want to do is, you can see in this particular area, I'm building up more paint, which is causing it to come forward. In these areas, I'm using light pressure of my brush, sometimes my finger. It's pushing into a little bit of that beige and greens and stuff. So now, even though I'm using mostly the same type of colors, just by my technique, I'm making my bouquet immediately different by just the look of them, okay? By what's, what's going on in there. All right, let's take some of our uh, burnt sienna and our green. Sometimes I like a, to really cool it and put a bit of the violet in here like this. And let's just use the chisel of this three quarter inch and let's just draw down. Now this is where, I, it, that's a line. See, and that line can also take you out of the painting. So that's where I like to kind of blur it off. Sometimes you'll see me drag it, blur it off and create some different things. So that line actually starts to take you in to here. There's a lot of things that we do with designs and stuff like that. But I just, get, I, you, I've got to give, I want this to be like a spray coming down here like this. And I want to give some ideas here uh, of stems and stuff holding these together. But I want to blur them off just a bit. I'm going to leave a lot of negative space out through here. 
but I want to just give the idea of some stems and you can continue on you can give some continuation to some of these stems and stuff out here too or a little movement you can see each time I put a little line it's a little it's a little pointer it's taking you wherever I want it to go or wherever that line is kind of going it's kind of taking you there so but I like little touches of them and I use just the corner and you know I used to use like a small brush I used to think okay the small brush get in there with a small brush and get in there. that makes them too perfect you're not going to be able to make them perfect and people you know now what if you're a beginner you may think oh well I can't do that no just slide it in there and push it out to destroy the line a little bit if you're too thick or something like that we'll take a color come in and negative paint in there but it's much easier and this is what Sergeant John Singer Sergeant some of you always ask, I always reference Sargent because he's totally changed the way I paint, especially in the Impressionism. And he always says, use as large a brush as possible to make a color passage or area of color. Use as large a brush as possible. And I find that so true. And it's so much more casual and natural looking when I use the edge of a big brush than when I use a fine liner and put it in there. It makes it too perfect, too stiff, okay? That's my, that's my opinion, and it works for me, so I like that. So I'm going to put just a little bit of pine green into some of that, just right along. Not, not a lot, just some. So I change up those tones just a bit, get a bit of that green. Now we're going to create an area of just real nice, deep, rich color. And to do that, I like thick, cool pine green and red violet these are this makes a super dark almost black cool color and to really and you can see that see like any red area you get these real cool darks so I want to come in here and express even though I won't take it out too far some real darks and I can push that around a bit there but express some real darks this is this expression ex, really expressed dark like this will make my reds appear brighter called through what we call if you study color theory it's called simultaneous contrast how do you make that red look brighter you put a dark next to it see so I will pull some of this down maybe touch into a bit of my beige a bit of that uh, burnt sienna right in there and pull some of that color down like that this is all still really wet. If it's not, make sure you touch in a little bit of extender here. And it is warm today. It is, it is warm. I, I had the air conditioning on a little bit right now. I cooled it down in here to 74 in this part of the studio. It's 100 degrees outside today, and it's very, very, very dry. So the paints could dry really fast. And when, that, when it's that kind of temperatures and stuff out there, I watch. I'm constantly feeding extender into my paint so that these stay wet see on my palette this is my glass palette you see me use so many times they're staying wet even though it's so dry and so wet outside now if something is really dry this isn't really really dry but if it's if it's dry on you and let's say you want to soften it out you f flip over from extender to water so I put a little bit of water on my paper towel like this just tap it in there water is the solvent and it'll cut through see how it cuts through it'll cut through and soften out some of those colors those tones real quick and you can use that to, to help soften through your your painting here okay all right I like those maybe a touch of this dark right up in here just to carry that through and let's just take that wet paper towel and pull it down a bit see I love that look it just just drips that color right out there and let's take a touch a little extender that starts to tack up at all feed your paint your paints thirsty give it a drink let's put a bit of that right in there so that's a nice deep now let's break some of that with some green because I just don't always like it to be that solid color so we want to put some other colors in there as well and uh, so we'll break some greens you could put some greens and red some greens and yellows you know I was thinking about painting uh, 
with the, the camellias and stuff here, maybe some buttercups or something like that, because I like to break color up. But then I thought, no, these might be just kind of fun to paint them as the camellia, especially if I add the yellow center that's there. And the, I was looking at the different camellias, and that's some kind of Korean version of it. Um, the uh, ones that I had, though, out in California did have it, but it was more tight, didn't have the, the stamen and stuff up there so uh, so high. But uh, it was kind of a neat one, too. Now, we also want to, as we're going to paint these camellias, do some leaves. So right now I've been working with a lot of extender here. We could also work with, as you're starting to do some of your painting, work with the Derivan's open meat in the open medium works really well so a little bit of my tone green here I'll start back here and you can see the depending on which camellia you have they have quite large leaves and I want to put a few of them out here let's see let's put maybe a couple out through here one two or three strokes there the leaf is a little wider in the center and comes back in here so pull back in like that. Now I like to let that set a second and pull off to get that nice blurry edge like that. And then don't repeat that leaf everywhere. Let's maybe add a little more green to it. Maybe even a bit of our Darulite here so it changes up quite a bit. Don't repeat that same color of that leaf. Change it. Okay, so let's put one maybe right out over here. It'll be a little different. Pull the leaf back in little oval there. Let that set a second. Make sure your finger is kind of clean here. Wipe that off a bit. Pull in towards that vein line and disrupt and destroy that edge. Now if you take off too much, I may have taken off too much. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of the color off and reset that in just a bit here. And you can get some nice variations to your leaves with extra little colors in there, you know, by how you do it by how much and what how dirty your brush is. But I can soften that all by coming here and soften a little bit of my color here and just pull him down through. Let's take some of that off again. Don't pull down through and then keep going because you'll make it all one color. So that's why I soften tap it on my palette here to take some of that off. And you'll see it makes a slightly different color. Let's put a little bit of that brighter green right here coming in on this edge of that of that leaf on that one. That'll give them some harmony. I like that. I'm going to wipe that color on my off my brush here. And then I'm going to come in and pull down just a bit. There's a bit of that red pulling in. That makes a, a little bit different color. I like that. I want to so you'll see this is from front, some of the painted simply, some of the other leaves. When I'm doing a larger painting like this, it's a, what I call a gallery painting. Uh, this, I will put a little bit more, a little bit more working into the leaves than what I do in just some of the uh, quick 30 day leaves and stuff that I do with roses and stuff. So I'll put a little bit more into them. So you get a, a bit difference of color and stuff. I love that color. Just because you love it doesn't mean you use it everywhere. You'll make the, the painting here too much the same. So we use it in a few areas, touching that color around. But it's a good color with some of those reds and stuff that we're doing. And in some cases here, I'm going to take that color. Let's add a little bit more pine green, maybe a bit of blue, and just a tiniest, tiniest bit of white. This will make your cooler kind of teal color leaves over here okay and we could add a mark or two of those here just through to break up some of those other tones especially onto the downside down here maybe a touch of red violet into that will cool that just a bit more you see that it's very cool very dark here and let's just drop off a leaf off here Go thin, widen out, and then back down to the point there. That's the that's the camellia leaf. So it points up. It's a little wider. It's a little wider through the midsection of the leaf here. And so I set it up, and then you know, I, sometimes I will imagine a vein line here. And if I want to change the leaf, I'll pull in towards that vein line. 
let's lighten that up just a bit just a touch of my open medium here sometimes instead of pulling in I'll pull out pull out like this and so you can set up this the movement of that leaf so it's a little different so I got a little bit of a light side and dark side there a little cool color if it starts to tighten up too much loosen up with some extender that's what makes the extender so great we can use that now I'm just gonna add a few marks of those colors out here to uh, just change it up a bit now we're not you know we're not done adding leaves we can you know I want to add some leaves back here at the at the very beginning back here but maybe a bit more burnt sienna in them I like the younger more orangier leaves so we'll draw one back in a little wider and back down here towards the, the base there and let's pull in a couple strokes towards that so I stroke it first to kind of give me an idea of uh, where that you know the shape of the leaf and then I'll go back and you know stroke from the edge in and stuff like that to uh, to give some different shapes to it now change the color let's come over to this side here push this leaf in out like that a little bit different maybe just a touch of green on it pulled in towards that vein line right there tap it soften it in your brush and pull through again if you think the colors a little too much right there so we'll do that Okay. and take some of those colors and tap them through with chisels add some extra movement and stuff like that through those flower I mean through those through your uh, your uh, composition there to to suggest different things we can add some different movements here out some of those greens that are just left over in my brush here let's take a bit more of that green and just make a mark of it here you don't know what's all going on out there but I don't want to fill it up too much of my negative space also negative space again is that area around it and the other thing and I'm notorious for doing this is filling it up perfect leaving the same amount of space so there's some areas here that I may want to go out a little more towards the edge here so that I don't have a perfect border all the way around okay I think that's it for our three quarters for right now. We've got a lot of that painting done with our three quarters. I'm going to go down to my half inch. This is my well loved half inch brush here. And um, I'm going to work some of the other colors and stuff into the paint. I mean, in, see, I said painting again, didn't I? Did I say that earlier too? Camellia. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is about peony. Once I painted a peony, I call everything a peony. These are camellias, and if you hear me say that, yeah, just ignore me, okay? I'm going to take some uh, yellow oxide here, and I'm just going to just suggest, now, not every single one of these do I want to put a center on, and I don't want to do all those little stamen because those are uh, too, a little stiff for me. So what I want to do is I just drag my brush, put on a little bit of, of the yellow oxide, then I turn my brush onto its angle and I just push up and around a little bit to uh, break it up. Not so much that, see, I'll, so I'll tap it on here like this and then I'll break it up. Now, don't do it too many times because you'll just make it all one color. Just break that up a bit here. This one, I would envision maybe the center right in there and maybe we just pick up a bit of it because it's going to, this kind of the queen one here we're going to turn down just a bit and might just pick up a little bit that one I don't think we'll do anything with it we'll just keep those yellows right in here now sometimes when I do that though I've isolated yellow into the center of it and so I always have this thing and I had in the landscapes in the last landscape video I told you this when you establish or when you the rule is that I created that when you express the color you move a color so I've expressed the color there and I will add accents of that color 
into a few other areas of the composition, just as marks, and you can see your eye will travel out through those, and it establishes what we call harmony through the painting. Okay, then landscapes and stuff, artists use what are called common colors throughout different different planes of the landscape, um, you know, and stuff, and, and through the floor all do kind of the same thing, so even like little marks. What is that? No clue. It is just you carrying the color as an artist, right? Okay. And uh, you, anything can happen there. Now, let's go in. We're going to paint all the Prima. We're going to use our reds. Let's paint the queen up here first. I'm going to take both, my naphtha red light and my red, and I'm actually going to create a lighter value, almost a pinky color here. Add this all up here. So I'm going to get right about a six, a five to a six here first, and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to watch kind of that one right there. I like that that bit there. I'm going to pull a petal right here. I'm using kind of the chisel, just pushed out the chisel here like this and establishing this light petal here with a couple strokes pulling down like that. I'm imagining this is my center. If this was a rose, here's going to be the bowl of my rose right here. So I'm going to pull down, but not quite all the way. Now, with if you don't we want to paint these camellias, and that's about the lightest tone that you see over there, but it's a little pink, too. Um, and then, so to take, what I do is I'll take it out. I'll take a little bit of my cooler color here, and I'll go from the center here out, wipe my brush slightly, and the center here out, and leave just the light little tip there of that part of the peony. Uh, there it is again. <laughs> The uh, camellia, okay? That part of the camellia. Let's just draw a little. So, so, so in many of the rose videos, I showed you the petal edging technique I use. This is like a modified version of it. And it's where I'll use a medium red tone to take out and leave just the tip of that light little color out there like that. Now, I haven't added the darks. We'll go through and we'll add the dark. But that's basically how I build the petals around on a, a rose or a, a, a camellia or a rose or a peony that I want really uh, to stay that red color that we got to stay away from some of the pinks that we can get into, you know, really easy. Now, up into the center here, let's put a bit of that center little light on here. So this will be up where the bowl of that one is going to be, okay? We'll take some dark, some of our, let's even add some red and our red violet here. And let's add some dark down through there. Right now I'm just looking for some of that movement. I want that dark right down here on this lower side. We're going to impressionist paint this. We'll do some detail on it, but we're going to impressionist paint that. But that gives you an idea for some of those lighter little petals there. Let's take some of that light, pull this little edge here, little hits of the light here, around like that. I chose that one's going to dip down through like that. Let's put, now I'm going to let that sit for just a second. Let's do slightly lighter red here, naphthol red and pink here, cool, slightly lighter and build the front of this turned one here, just that front edge, almost like you're building a, a rose there, okay? And then let's take some of the cooler shadow color right at the base and take some of that movement, that light pinky color out. So we'll leave it right up there by the tip of the petal, which is the same thing we're gonna do there. But you can see this one kind of turns here, doesn't it? Now let's take that red, Red violet, push some of that dark right there into the even into that yellow there. See, I'm using just the corners of my brush, casual little tip painting there. And we'll do light, a little bit of light tipping here, like this, to set petals, the, the camellia petals here. I open that up there like that a bit just like you would have like right in there okay and then we'll take the darks to 
touch into your darks and take them out a bit as they go back into the, the center there of the camellia there. As they head towards that center there. So light, let's get a warm, let's come up to the front. Now, what makes you want to grab this one as opposed to that one? Whenever I'm really heading up to the front light, where I want the color a little warmer and lighter, I'm going to I'm going to push that in. So and we'll just vary the petals a little bit like that. So I'll push and you can see that nice warm here. Let's push a bit of that warm light right in there here like that, right up there into the front. You'll see that, okay? And then we'll get down into some of that cool and those reds and take some of it out. Here. So you'll see the idea of the petals, but yet it's kind of like the bowl of a rose. We're always restating it with those reds so that the whole... See, here's the problem. When you start adding white to these reds, they go pink, and we don't want it to go pink. So we have to, we have to find a way as an artist to control that pink. So here, I put it on, take it out. Take out what is too much on it with that darker red. Okay, make sure you wipe your brush each time. But we can use those light pinks like this. This this is a little warmer. And let's just put in a little bit more of that. We can use those to create like little turned edges of petals here like this. Like here's the edge right here. Let's put another one right out here like this. Okay. So that's like the edges of that one. Now, instead of pulling it down, which would make it all too pink, I'm going to wipe my brush with my paper towel. I'm going to go over here and grab some of my cooler color, and I'll vary this a bit. And I'm going to pull out till I just get to the tip of that petal there, just like that, and leave just that lighter tip. Here, this works really well on red flowers. Now, this is also when I pull out like this, those of you that have that brown matter pigment, that is really what that brown matter does so well. Is it you can uh, control that stuff really well with brown matter. Let's uh, push in a little bit more light here. Maybe a touch right out there like that. And then push it in. Now, you're an impressionist painter. We don't want to make these... I'm going to add a little bit of red violet in here just because I'm in towards that center. And I'll keep that nice dark movement in there with that. Here. Maybe just a touch of light there. And I can push the petals in any way that I want. Any directions. I'll vary them a bit. Let's get a little bit warmer, lighter, and okay, I've got so much paint in there, I'm just going to wipe a little bit out, pick up some of this mottled color here, and we'll come across and maybe pick up a petal right there like that. Maybe a touch more light right up by the tip of these. Don't stroke too far, just a bit here. So it puts on just a, it's almost like a, you know, petal edging technique. Puts just a little bit of that on there. Let's go back to a cool, dark, and find the main part of that, that petal, which is right there. Let's put a bit of that right out here. Maybe there's a petal right there. So you see, sometimes I'll leave that nice little tip of that as I start to find some of the shapes here coming around for that one there. Okay, and uh, a little bit of cool. So I'll put the petal on, kind of, I'll put the petal on and then I'll use the cool color to take it off and destroy the edge of it. Okay, I'm going to take the mark of that edge down just a bit. Let's go over here to this one and let's start a few lighter. I know that looks really light and I'm just going to show you. See, I'll start some petals in like this around there on that on that flower. Then I'm going to take some of my red and quinacridone, feed some of the open medium in there 
and you can paint in or out, but you, I like to push it out. Sometimes I'll push it out so that it takes it out in a different way, not just a stroke. So I, I will smash and push a bit like this, and I start to take the pink out, leaving the pink just a little bit more natural up right around, um, right around the tip of the petal. Let's put a little more dark right in there. Here, boom, get a little bit of that dark tone in there. And just take out, sometimes push to incorporate them. And I'm painting movement, basically movement in and out of the pan. <laughs> in and out of the camellia here. And, um, but we want to keep these nice reds, red, red, red here. Let's uh, cut petal in like that. That looks kind of neat there. And uh, a little bit of the lighter color there, like that. Let's take some of that out with some reds here. There we go. I want a bit of that darker red right in there go right up against that center and we'll you know we generally will uh, restate some of those centers and stuff but you know you look at how much just this just color movement and, and not specific perfect petals we don't have that here let's draw one kind of down here a bit like that take some of our darker reds take it out right to the tip so you just kind of pull the light in, pull the shadow out, basically. There, like that, okay. And I'll work that several times. Let's work this lighter one down through here. I'll go, I'll switch off going back and forth as I see something in one of the other ones that I might want to change or do. I'll just go ahead and go do it here. So, add a little more light or something, right to an edge or something. There, that works. Okay. And, yeah, let's put more red, red. Leave a bit of that dark right there, so it creates a nice little shadow for it. Let's put a light little stroke mark right there by the tip of that ah, didn't lay off enough it doesn't lay off enough I didn't have enough paint when you start building up paint here like this it gets really tough to lay in small marks so you have to even use more paint to get it to lay off let's take a bit of our shadow and take that out so basically you see right here like me varying the petal here I started with this color pulled down I put in a little light stroke right there I then took the dark and painted it back out of that center and you get a multicolored little petal that's red that's not pink does that make sense it's red it's not pink here so that's basically what we're working on with this technique now let's come back to the big queen here we'll take some light and some natural red light here and let's rework this edge a bit more because we really want her to, to stand out. We'll take a softer dark and pull and work across that there. So we get that nice interest in there, okay? There like that. And uh, let's take this, maybe draw an edge in just a bit. Here sometimes if it's the paint's really wet, I'll just use my finger to take it off. What's cool as we come around to the other side here, we'll start to add some of these cools, which is the naphthol red. We'll go from that naphthol red light and white to the naphthol red. And let's get even darker, because you can have more darks right down in through here and just let this down here set really cool and dark 
here. So we haven't really developed. I'm planning on doing a lot of smaller real development and on those three more than anything else. Um, but we're not ready yet for that. So there will be a lot more. It's not there yet. Let's darken this down, cool it down, take some of this, your naphtha uh, red, and let's just add a few touches here to this outside one here like that. Okay. Let's add, thin this out, gray it down in here just a touch and add a bit of that right to the fronts there. Just, just casually. More color than anything else. More color than anything else. Just add a bit of that back down in there. Okay. Which is quite, it works quite well there. And uh, let's build a, so I like that maybe onto this one, which has a sense of being a bit more farther forward. We'll add just a bit of the light to the edges there of that, that one. Let's add, cool that down just a bit so it's softer. Maybe the idea. Now, as that starts to build in there, what am I losing? I'm losing that deeper shadow. Well, let's get some of that quinacridone and red violet and place that right in there. Paint out just a bit. See, that shape of some of these flowers comes from that shadow just as much as it comes from the light. So don't lose your shadow, see? Don't lose your shadow shadow and light here okay all right so now I'm going to go down drop down brushes again yeah let's go down to my eight let's maybe even go a little smaller let's work a couple of smaller petals around okay we'll work these this down to my six you could use a four or a six here okay and uh Let's work some of the smaller, more detailed petals here. We'll go a bit light, right around the the, the main part of, of this one here. We'll start to close up the center a bit. So I'll, basically, you're gonna kind of build the bowl of a rose here. We'll push in some of those petals. Change the red slightly. Let's change the red here. Right like that, okay. Let's get some of that nice naphtha red in there. And build some of these petals here. Out like that. Small brush allows you to do a, a few more streaks and stuff in a petal, giving you just a bit more interest. A little bit of light here and push that on, take a bit of our dark, paint that right out, leaving just the tip there of that light. And sometimes if I feel it's a little too outlined, I'll go back to some of my red and just hit the edge with some red there so that it's not completely, you know, light all the way around. So you have some reds going in there. Remember, red does have a value here. so. We can use it to draw petals as well. Is if our areas there are dark enough, we can use it to draw some of those petals here. Let's um, take some of that red, maybe a little quinacridone in it here. There we go. Just a bit of that right out there. So I can build some more, and I, I need to have... Uh, a couple of just really nicely shaped petals. It doesn't take very many, just a few nicely kind of shaped petals there. That'll give more of the, uh, the, uh, the petal-edged camellia look to it. Let's take a bit of that red and red violet. So you put on that light and we paint out towards up towards the edge of that petal. They're leaving that rest of that one in and I'll just kind of work those together those tones together soften some of the movement see and I'm, I'm so I'm building those lights together leaving that light we'll edge this one here and 
put on another little mark of a petal here. Leave a softer red. I'm going to leave that a little bit lighter, I think, right on that edge. And uh, let's drop a bit of that light, kind of with this petal coming in just a bit. There we go. Sometimes we'll just model some of these light colors together right in there. And you're painting, you know, movement more than anything else. Movement. Let's drop. So you can use that petal edging. Remember I showed you that before. That little petal edging to help draw little petals without getting too pink. We don't want to get too pink. But we can draw some of our petals. And we can get this nice warm naphthol red light right in here now. Nice warm. So we're going from the cools to the warms right up into the very center here now, which is gonna cause this to come forward and advance right in there, see? And I think I need to restate, or restate some of this center here. I'm gonna restate my yellows as well, but put a bit more dark. See what, like I say, the dark. The dark can do a lot of the, the painting of these as well, okay? So we'll put that in. Let's draw a bit more of those edges here. And pull this edge down just a bit. So small little marks there like that. And uh, now we'll just tap in like I did before, but this time smaller bit of that yellow oxide right in there just to say we did it and uh, we'll come back out here let's get a little lighter maybe right on this edge a little lighter gives a nice light but see through the width of the petal it's too much because I lose a lot of my red so and I have to determine okay if that's gonna be light warm I'll take out here Step way back on your brush. Take out that some of that with the stroke of the naphthol red light. That's your warm. And then if you really want to sink it in there, take a little bit of your cool color. Okay, take some of your your cooler reds and sink that right into the the edge there of that cool color in there. Of right into that shadow. Let's push that right into that shadow there. You can see what depth that shadow starts to really add to that flower now, see? Really starts to add a lot now. Let's uh, get a little bit more light. Drop one right in there. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. Let's get that nat warm naphthol red light stroke right on there as well. Maybe just a bit more of that edge. So I'll load it up more with it on the edge. And then I'll turn that edge to where I can push it and draw it down. All right, so I'm rotating over onto that edge. So I can draw with that edge. And then I'll go up to my warm here. Soften it. Push that in. And maybe even a little warm and light here. Remember, you can you put on, and if it goes too pink, you paint out. Paint out with the darker colors to get rid of that pink. Kind of like that little extra light right there for a second. Now let's take just a touch of that pink out, maybe with the cooler. Since by the shadow, take a little quinacridone, a little red, and just take some of that out. There, see that makes a nice, that's a pretty little edge there. Now we can take that edge, something here, and even just draw a little chisel, like there's a petal there. Right there like that. And just hit that cool edge. Hit that, hit that bowl color right there. So that is coming in right like that so and step back and taking you go wow that's hopefully my the the uh, 
little uh, students that like red are liking this one because they like red. You know, red is, is something that, I mean, I have to really, as I'm painting this, I really have to think through my warm, my cools, naphtha red light and white to my light warm side and the naphtha red and my, and my two violets to the shadow side because I have a hard time really grasping red. It's not a color that I, that I uh, you know, like to use a lot. Um, and so, but I have some of my best friends you love red. That's all they paint with is reds. And, um, you know, I wish I had that. So I'm just gonna push that in. So here comes slightly warmer edge onto that one there, see? Now I incorporate down, take a little cool, sometimes you know, go to the naphtha red light. Sometimes some of your quinacridones into that. Take out those edges there. Leave just partial edge there of it. Okay. Here's a bit more here. A few little marks. Sometimes I'll just leave the marks in there. Like those are the marks of the flower. Here. I'll take out some of it. There, okay, and uh, this would be pretty to have, maybe even slightly warm light. So I draw with the lights, I draw with the lights, and then we take out so that the flower does not become pink, right? That's basically it. We'll take out some reds. You can take out with a variety of your reds and red violets so that you get a variation to your color. And see there, I will pick up, and you pick up that light, so I'll, I'll just reload the brush again and lift out here so I get some different colors. That's nice. Let's go slightly cooler here, lighter, cooler. There we go. That's kind of nice. Take out just a bit. There, gives a different look to that little camellia. <laughs> I got it. So you get that little camellia there. And that's just it, just kind of folding in different little petals. Let's put one right out here, kind of light. And uh, break that edge just a bit there. And maybe take some of those softer reds right there and push that in so that there's not a tremendous amount. But, you know, it's generally up here to the top side or what I perceive as kind of the light warmer side, I'll use the, um, the naphtha red light right up here. And I think I want to warm up this petal right in here in the front of this camellia here. Warm that just a bit more with some more of the naphtha red light. Then I'll cool the bowl of it here. There, like that. Cool that bowl. And uh, let's kind of just use that chisel edge of this. Draw that down, right down in there. And maybe take the shadow right by the edge of that. So it looks just like a turned edge of a petal. Now, I'm not sure I like that one, two, three, but that is what happens in a camellia many times. We can bring this out a bit here. Stop some of that look. Go slightly cooler here. There we go. Pull some of that out now. Let this take some shadow. Take some of it out. There. And maybe one more smaller here to help round that one even more. There. That's pretty good. I like, I just want a blurry kind of movement in there with those yellows. Just tap and blur that in there just a bit. Okay, and so I'm liking some of those. Let's get a cooler, lighter pink. And having the warms and cools, you know, kind of varying them a bit, 
gives a nice look to your your uh, camellias here as well because they're changing. Let's bring this one in. We'll increase the size of it just a touch until it's what do we call formal. It's just about touching that one there. And um, a little bit wider here to that petal. There now. So I put a lot of pink up in there, see? So then I'll just take some of my darker violets and paint out. Since I'm on the shadow side here, I'll just push back and forth or paint it in and out there and uh, create that in and out of that color. I like that, but maybe even taking some of that more of a violet here, lighter violet, and adding another lighter almost petal, violet petal there, maybe taking out with more of a red. So we, you're just playing those reds and violets all in there to get all those different tones here. Let's draw that lighter edge here. That's too much of an edge. There we go. And maybe maybe even slightly warm here, so we'll go back up here. More of a warm petal right up here into the front. There. Whoops, I just, big finger, <laughs> wiped that out. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it again. So <laughs> we're going to do that. I can't believe I did that. Yeah, that's okay. Now we'll just take that out, just push that back in. Sometimes, you know, you do that and you just go, wow, now that's even prettier. So, I mean, I don't do it on purpose, wipe out a petal that I put on, but sometimes they come out, this, the next time they come out even better. So that's why I never get frustrated or anything cause, because I, it's just all paint. I'll just do it again. And I've realized over time that many times the next time I do it, it comes out a little better. There. That's kind of pretty. Now, I'm not really wild about the loopy loopiness of that one there, just kind of looping around. So I'm just going to take a bit of it out. You really don't need to have too much structure, you know, perfect structure to these. You can leave them more painterly here, which means not as much structure. So I'll take a bit of that out here and there. There, like that, with some of my reds. Okay, so that one kind of controls it. Let's take a cooler bit of the light here, drop in. Maybe an angled little petal there. That one's kind of nice. Maybe even more of a red violet or quinac or quinacridone violet one here. A little bit of red here. Bit of one right in there. Push that in. Let's put a slightly lighter petal right up here into the front. Kind of curve it a bit now, and again, draw it with the light, and then take it out with your darks. So if it gets too pink, if you like the pink, leave it. And if it gets too much, just take it out with the darks there, and that makes the pretty little shapes of them. And uh, don't forget, you know, if anything, see everything here is still so wet. Everything here is still so very wet, and if it uh, starts to dry up too much you can add more of the open medium if it starts to um, when you add that open medium if it starts to uh, really um, get sticky too thick you can thin it all up with some extender so let's take a bit of that light maybe just an edge of it hitting this one put in an idea here of some reds Hitting that. See, it doesn't take very much to put some of that color back there. That's what I like. Let's hit an edge. Maybe that's one right there. So this sometimes show a little edge. That's all it needs, really. 
Nice little cool red tip here. Out there like that. Gets that red red. So if you feel overall maybe something's a little cloudy or needs a little bit more after you get that on, you can come back now with like your cool, that, that naphthol red and uh, just add more bright pow red to some of these areas. And if you add too much of it, just add a little cooler quinacridone shadow here to shape up some of that, even down into your darker red violet now, which will really show you a nice deep shadow here. So that gives you your nice real deep red shadow here. Push that right into some of that darks here. Get that nice movement in there. Right, get that red. Yeah, so maybe I'll put a brighter, maybe a quinacridone and a red stroke right in there. Take out just a bit of that pink there. And uh, a little touch of the if I need more contrast, look to the shadow, the red violet in there. And let's go back to the red here. And I'm using lots of paint now, lots of paint. There we go. And uh, slightly lighter here on this top petal. There, but that just gives some nice, nice interest there for some of those uh, those colors. So you got some nice deep reds and uh, let's see how that is looking right there like that into that frame. That's looking pretty good. It's going to be jumping, those reds will be jumping off pretty nice there. We can get some more interest and stuff into our leaves. Now this is also, you know, so we got some nice reds in there. We can start using maybe a little a bit of Hansa and yellow and tapping a bit more contrast into the the centers because you can see like on that one but I'm not going to put those stamen in there. I just think they they uh, distract a bit. I'm just going to tap in a bit of that light to have a a few hits of it into those there. These three main ones here and then we got a we got to look around here to see now see if I go in and add the blues and stuff that will totally change everything every all the feeling of that of this warm cool reds and so I might not want to do that but I might try to uh, let's go back grab my half inch brush here rinse some of that red out now when you rinse your brush and you're painting all the prima when you rinse your brush and you take it into the water what happens here you've now added a fast drying product back into your brush. So what I generally do is I'll poke it into a little extender and work it there for just a second and get some of that water out of there. So I won't have that. Now let's go first through and let's create some high contrast. Let's take some uh, bit of our pine green and our red violet. We'll add a bit of the open medium and I have a bit of extender in it as well. And let's negative paint right up here by our high contrast areas here. Now maybe even drop in some really dark toned violets in there too. See what that does? That hits that, gets that nice toned color in there. And you can, instead of just always having the leaves, see, you can break that up even with some like the, the reds. Like maybe that's another camellia sitting back there right back in there like that see so it doesn't always have to be the greens it doesn't always have to be leaves well, let's take some of this and restate right back down in there that's pretty good it pops out those red ones really nice here okay and uh, let's pull let's take this nice cool green here 
and uh, leave that light that's right there but we'll pull this down a bit more here down a bit further so we'll pull that dark down but we'll leave a bit of that light showing in there as well and we'll pull that down see I like that kind of stuff there and we can even take some of that nice let's get some quinacridone into that pull that down drag that through see I like these broken look looks of the little bits of color there like that coming out and you start to look for areas of contrast so it doesn't take very much of this dark but you can put in just little hits of it here to uh, you know create some more interest or pop something out you know you can do that you know here um, that works pretty well there like that and I'm going to have some start out slightly darker here maybe some other leaf shapes here maybe one that might even cover up this one slightly and force it to the back a bit more let's look at that leaf shape right there it's in dark but I might go a little lighter the thing is start trying and see I like that wiped out wipe your finger wipe that out but you can uh, touch and you know look at the, the different leaves you can also put in a lighter let's go yellow oxide pine green maybe a touch of white here you don't forget to add your medium to it so it doesn't dry and add a bit of that light here to that side of that leaf that's good now you can just come through your composition also in some areas and hit it with some of these colors like these are lighter little leaves here as well you know coming out you can leave some of the shadow but uh, you know it gives you that nice variation of greens and that's what you know painting is We've got to get some of these variations of colors in. So let's just drop some of this in here. Maybe a bit more yellow, a bit more white. And try to the outside maybe in just a bit. I'm going right through my wet red, so I'm picking up a bit of that red. And that's fine. I'm liking it. That's working out okay there. But see, by putting that over there, that's shoving that one further back, and I like that. Now let's go even just a touch lighter yet. And this is where I use just the chisel here. And we're just gonna put a little mark out for that vein line. Sometimes a little more yellow. Here, and if I get too much, I just push into it a bit, take it out. Just tap a bit into that one, just a bit here, some of those, get these colors in there, and let's get a bit more green, get these colors here, there we go, tap a bit of dark against the edge of that flower there that just pops it out take a bit of that light light yellow well that didn't show up at all and then we'll try it a little bit lighter because I've got a lot of paint on there so you have to really and then you take it back out and get to do it again <laughs> I didn't like that one anyway we'll just do it again so that's better Take a bit of it back out. It's a little heavy here. You can, if, you, if your finger's feeling a little full of paint, maybe a little fat finger today, you could just use a brush too. You just use a brush. Let's just, let's just do that. Use the brush and go right up against that edge. Maybe pull a shadow of it out like that. That makes a nice leaf. That's a nice, interesting leaf here. 
But sometimes, don't forget, we're impressionist painters, so we can take some of this pink and this green, and we can just tap that stuff around, doesn't that, and uh, create some uh, differences there as well. Let's, um, boy, I really, really want to get a even more of a boom color right down there. Ooh, I kind of like that. Let's get a little cool red, naphtha red. Just draw that right, right, just like some of those splashes of those other colors. Isn't that kind of pretty down there? I wonder if we can uh, sneak some of that right in here, that boom red here. That really, you know, you, and that increases the red red. We can get some of that right in here as well. Takes away just a bit of the pink of them, see? And get some more red in there. And that's just the, the naphtha red light and some quinacridone, maybe a touch of red violet. Or if you have that brown matter, boy, that's just perfect area for that color. And just grab some of that. Just touch that around there. So this one feels, now that I built up this one, that one feels a little bit weak. So let's take a bit of red violet and and add a pushed in center there. So this is all still really wet here. Just add that. Those coming down the sides there. And uh, so any of this real deep, nice reds, you can use that to Increase the the overall red and less pink of your of your painting here. Just big thick bold color, kind of like what I put on there. Big thick and bold color. There we go and uh, tap some of that. Boy, that, that uh, naphtha red light and, and direct red violet dark is pretty too, is another bit of it there. That's kind of nice. Let's put a bit of that red there. And see, I'm, I'm leaving the tips of the petals, so I'm painting through the mid area of each kind of leaf or each kind of, excuse me, each petal that I'm doing. Push that in just a bit. So I'm leaving, uh, you know, those lighter colors. Now right here, I could have uh, just an indication of a lighter petal right there. Take just it out. So I'm just looking for... Took too much of it out. Yeah, so we'll push an edge of it back in. Yeah, see, that's kind of nice. Now, take out just a little. Just a little. Don't get frustrated by mistakes, you know. Frustration, I mean, mistakes just gives you opportunities to try it again and maybe even better. Sometimes it's not, and you go, darn it. No one's going to know, you know, and sometimes it's not, and that's a bummer, and then sometimes it's even better than that was the first time. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that looks pretty good, I think. Now, we have to decide, you know, I like the, the medium beige down through some of the stuff here, and, you know, I'm going to go back with my three-quarter inch here, with some of my medium beige, my greens, my pinks, maybe a bit of the light here. I don't think I'm gonna add any of the blues, but I am gonna loosen up some of my background here, work some of this through here. And what this does is it just allows me to calm down some areas that, because uh, it's my background basically, calm down some areas of the composition and pull out and stuff. So you see it's it's the background going out 
and and softening some areas. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I'll use like blues, and you could use water or or the extender is the safest. Maybe a bit of the green in here, here like this, and we'll just work some of that in like that. And uh, I don't want to take out all of my you know my other stuff there. So that's. That works. Now we can just take a slightly lighter. We can even go slightly pink here too, Dave. As a difference, because I use blue a lot, and you know, I'm a, like I like I tell you, I'm a production painter, and, and I know a lot of you paint for hobbies and stuff, and paint for your own enjoyment, um, and that's great. And thank you so much for joining me along this artistic journey. We're gonna have a great time. But I'm a production painter and selling, and so you know, like. When I go to an art show and I put up my paintings and I want to sell them or if we have them out there in the gallery or some of the other galleries that I put them in, I like to have different looks. So I don't like blue all the time in there. So, you know, I'll paint this one. We'll stay out of it this time. But it is a beautiful, if you're a, you know, if you're painting and you're, and, you know, you see me in some of those other florals and stuff, add those blues. That's really, those are really pretty colors to add back in there and they would add a bit now remember if you do add those remember like I, I said before is touch them into some of the flowers and stuff like that too but we'll keep this one a little bit lighter we could even go just a touch of that yellow in there that might look like we know what we're doing let's loosen it up with some extender have our nice dirty paper towel here so it just gives me a, a, a different feeling of the light direction through the painting here. And uh, we'll blur it out here right into the back edges of these roses here. Roses, camellias right there. Yeah, some of you say, oh yeah. David, you paint a lot of roses. Well, that's because I keep saying roses. So I'm just going to paint roses because I keep saying roses or peonies. You know, they're all the same. Let's just take a bit of that out. Sometimes I'll take it out like that and then I'll come back and add a few other leaves in there. See, that's kind of pretty with that color traveling through there now. Slightly lighter, slightly darker, maybe a bit more warmth and light right up here. And I'm just going to go right through that leaf. I'll just put it back on here. Sometimes, you know, you paint around. It looks like you painted around. So we'll just add that light through there like that. That's kind of neat up there. Maybe a bit more of a streak here. Right up here in that corner and pull down there like that that's kind of neat maybe an edge of that right down in there there that looks and see we'll stay real blurry out everywhere else so let's take some of this cool stuff and just blur up those camellias there might even just blur up another one right up in there just a little color and let's go back let's blur up in here there and uh, we'll go back and uh, take some pine green some yellow a little bit of light nice big brush here too and add those leaves back in there well, that blurred too much. But we'll get a little more yellow, a little more light, and we'll do it correctly this time. But you know, like we said, you out a little wider, a little bit more of a point on the tip there. Let's get it different little green here. Right out there, blur those off don't really want to put a shadow on those or do anything that I just want to leave it very kind of impressionistic back there I think and uh, maybe a 
bit more green. We'll drop one right here in front of this one. A bit green and violet, slightly darker. Put a bit of movement, maybe a shadow onto that one. There. That's kind of nice. And maybe we'll go. I think I'm going to go back to that half inch. The bigger the brush, the softer it'll look too. So I want a little bit of interest to this one. So I'm going to go slightly smaller on my brush as I work just a stroke or two of light on that one. Maybe bring that light in on that one here as well. It helps it advance in front of that that other one, uh, that uh, that other camellia there. And uh, you know, camellias, the, the leaves have lots of you know nice vein lines and stuff like that. You could you could take your time and put all of that in there, and uh, if you wanted here. Just give an idea here. Let's bring this one up just a bit more. There. Let's put a bit of green onto this one now. As I paint some of these other, some of the originals that I thought, yeah, those look pretty good. They're all of a sudden start to appear a little bit weak, so I'll just do them again. Here. Here, like that. Maybe little touches of light. And then I think we're ready to call this a pretty nice little painting. Here, vary those greens. There we go. That Mike's probably picked that up. That's the little chime that FedEx has delivered. <laughs> <laughs> delivered a package for us. They always ring the little bell there on the side. We're a very busy place here. There we go. Nice little light that might be just touched too much. We'll just take just a bit of that out. But see, that just gives some more ump to the front of the composition. So you can use your leaves. And take a look at it on that camera. That camera's eight feet away. That's what it'll look like to there. And uh, you know, it's real deep and rich into the reds, which is what I wanted in this painting. So, that that worked out okay. But uh, you can use your leaves to help, you know, bring areas up. In other words, by putting some of these lights in like this, that's lifting up some of the uh, camellias here because they're sitting underneath the camellias, it'll lift it up. You don't want to get it so light that it, uh, you know, detracts from the camellias, but you can use your leaves to help lift them up. And I'll add, just in finishing here, I'll add a couple of uh, darker, more toned strokes down through there a bit again. Right down like this is, this is a real nice, like maybe this composition is, is coming down here. So we'll just blur some of that out there. And maybe some very thin, just use some extender. Little strokes of green out here. Sometimes I really like it when I really get casual and just quick little bit of blurry reds right out there like that. I'll we'll just leave that. I think just little touches. And I did like those spots of yellow. They're a little bit softer now, but I'll just add little little sparks. I always call them little sparks of color. Here, running through. Here, I just because it just gives it life, more color and stuff, and then you haven't isolated any yellows or anything in your painting. And you get these little sparks. Now, they're like that. Now, 
clean this one little word here. So there you have an idea of it. You painted. Everything has stayed wet. We're, what, an hour and a half into the painting. Everything has stayed wet here on my glass palette. You can see it all the way through. Starting to get a little bit here, maybe up into this top corner here. Um, if it's if you're using something here and you want to reconstitute it, you can use some extender and reconstitute it. But it and you can see it's starting to reconstitute. But if it doesn't reconstitute right away for you on that, you can add a little water, just a touch. You know, water is the solvent, which means your acrylic is starting to dry up a little bit. So you need to add just a touch of water to it. And you can see instantly that really reconstitutes everything there right away. But you need that extender in there to mix in to keep it wet. Does that make sense? You need the water to kind of break the bonds a bit and, um, you know, really loosen it up. So it's just like here. If I put extender onto this area right here, yes, it'll mix up. I might have to work quite a, quite a bit to start to get it, but it'll, it'll do it, okay? But if I add a tiny bit of water to it, water is the solvent. Okay, you add a tiny bit of water, it goes really quick. As a matter of fact, you can see I go right down to the, you can see I go right down and through to the glass. But you can see that instantly mixes all of this up right away. So this paint up here is at least an hour old. And now because I've added extender to it, see, I've added extender to it and a little bit of water to loosen it up. But, and if I go to paint with it, I'll get the extender back in here again. You need the water if it starts to dry. So here's the thing, if it starts to get really, really dry, the extender, the extender's not a solvent. The extender's job is to slow down the drying. But if the drying has been allowed to happen, because we haven't fed the, it all a long way, then you need a little bit of water to loosen it up, but have that extender in there so that it can now, this will now stay nice for me to paint with now again, and I can paint with it and do great things with it because it is now, you know, loose paint again. So there's a difference. Now this up here, again, it has a binder and everything, but it will not reconstitute dry paint. The extenders will not reconstitute drying paint. You need a little bit of water to break the bonds to loosen it up. Then you mix in that stuff to get it back here. That's how it all works, okay? There's a lot. There's a lot to it. But so as you're working all the premise, sometimes you know you, sometimes some color will start to dry just a little bit. And if the extender doesn't work into it, add just a tiny bit of water, it'll work it right back up, and you can use those colors again. Okay, and without any problem. Now that doesn't work with all acrylics, and like I've said in all of these things, all acrylics are different. I've made four very different acrylic painting systems for different companies and they were very different from each other some of them extender worked with some of them extender didn't work with so extenders don't work with all colors okay so keep that in mind okay so there's some nice red camellias i got it correct for you okay and i uh, hope you enjoyed it i had a lot of fun painting with you make sure that you hit those comments down there so this goes into the all prima playlist there's some where I'm starting some of our beginning lessons, so you'll see those. So on the channel, if you just look at it, you're going to get a variety of some of this coming up as I'm starting to paint for some of the beginning lessons and some of the all the prima lessons. Hopefully, you'll watch it all because we can use, we could all use some of this stuff. Even myself, when I go back to those beginning lessons, it's just like, oh, and I love to listen and answer your comments because that gives me all kinds of ideas and it helps me be a better teacher when you ask those questions. So hit the comments there and ask those questions, okay? Now also one other thing, there's a lot of things about people who say in all the comments, and I'm gonna to talk to you here as a teacher and as a, a professional artist for 40 years, okay? There's a lot of people that say, oh, I can't do that, I'm not good enough. That's a bunch of BS, okay? We're all, we're all artists, art, art like this, as you can see, like when I painted here, is a technique. This progression of a technique. You have to learn that technique. You have to learn those color progressions. I teach this stuff to my eight-year-old granddaughter, and she knows that stuff. Okay, Anybody can learn it at any time, but it takes practice, and it takes some time for you to get that technique up into here. And then, you know, I do a lot of what I call beginning lessons, more simple, simplified stuff. 
But I am a firm believer that a beginner, if someone, I wouldn't have a, uh, a bit of a difficulty at all sitting down with my eight-year-old granddaughter and painting that with her because I believe you learn that way. You challenge yourself to the most difficult things. And no, you may not accomplish it, but along the way, if it may take you three, four times to get a, a really nice painting, but along the way, you're going to learn so much. There's only so many things a beginning lesson can teach you. And there's so many things. I'm a big advocate, like when I learned portraits and westerns. I didn't go paint a western. I didn't go paint a three-legged horse because that's easier than a four-legged horse. No, I jumped right in and I started painting westerns and everything. And it's taken me time and, you know, and... That's what it is. That's what art is. But I believe at any time, jump in. At, if you look at a painting and you go, wow, I like that, try painting it, okay? And you may not be successful, and that's okay. That's okay. It takes time. It takes time. It takes practice. And it takes, for me, being a left brain, logical, analytical chemist, that's what I am, it takes repetition. But I can do it. I, you know, it's repetition, but I follow these things, okay? So don't say, you know, if you want to jump in and paint something, I am all for it. I'll be right there in your corner supporting you all the way, okay? And when you make a little mistake, just show me a photo of it. You know, go into our groups on MeWe, post a photo of it, and I'll help you. And we'll talk about it. And there's a lot of really great people over there in our groups. Go over to our groups. The links for it are in all the videos. Just go up to any videos, read in the description. There'll be a link for me we are of our groups go join our groups if you're joining our group okay and the group is free and we like we welcome everybody all we ask is that we have a real picture of your real face because it's conversational i don't like talking to an icon i don't like talking to a little piece of toast or something like that or a painting I like to know who I'm talking to, who I'm helping. So we ask everyone post a true picture of your face, okay? And we ask everyone to post one or two paintings so that we know that you're, you know, either a beginner painter, an artist, or something in there. And it helps us protect everyone that's in our group. So come join our group over on MeWe and paint with us. And we can help you if you have problems. Don't ever get frustrated. We can help you if you have problems. A lot of great people over there, okay? And hopefully I'll see you guys over there. Just put a face so that when I'm talking to you, I know who I'm talking to. And it makes it more conversational. It's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun, okay? Hopefully I'll see you guys over on that, on that group too. The links are in the description. And we'll continue on with the Ala Prima painting list. That can't... I just want to see it one more time. Yeah, boy, there you go. That, uh, I always look, when I think of red like this, Deanne Mealy, what do you think? Yeah, let me know. Okay, I'll see you guys later.